really now add on top of that is uh, again you've really explained people mm -hmm. first language mm -hmm. very beautifully is is a very respectful way of addressing people and recognizing people before the condition mm -hmm. so that the person is not necessarily their condition if mm -hmm. you say you are an obese person mm -hmm. uh, you are the condition mm -hmm. you know you don't go to someone living with cancer and say you're a cancerous person mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, you're just someone living with cancer. Mm. So it's that respect to really approach the people first. And, and I think this helps with uh, the conversation on stigma. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the stigma is also deeply ingrained in the language that we speak. So if we start recognizing people as, as people and treating them with respect, then we start to reduce the stigma that comes with, you know, living with obesity and... Cancer diabetes, obesity, hypertension, and asthma are all examples of non-communicable diseases and sadly, these diseases are the leading cause of death globally. But, do they really affect us here in Africa? And are Africans really living with these diseases? Find out here at the African NCD Champions Podcast as we share incredible stories of Africans living with non-communicable diseases. My name is Ogweno Steven and I'll be your host. Let's roll. One of the things that uh, really uh, needs to be talked about is when it comes to the perceptions around obesity and especially in uh, sub-Saharan Africa and I think mostly also in the global south, how people perceive people living with obesity, how people tend to think they are rich, how people mm. uh, blame them for, you know, getting or gaining their weight. Those are some of the things we will be talking about here, mm. and I'll push this to you. What have you seen mm. as uh, key areas that people have really had some uh, conversation around obesity and what perceptions, you know, mm. have been surrounding this whole conversation of uh, obesity? I mean, it's interesting to talk about uh, the perceptions around obesity. Um, growing up, I mean, coming from, I mean, for the, for for us who grew in the village, when we heard about somebody who's obese, what we think about is somebody who is having a a big, uh, we call it a big belly, mm. or somebody who's very very fat. But I mean, mostly we associated this with somebody with a very big. Mm -hmm. uh, stomach mm -hmm. uh, because you understand what I'm saying mm -hmm. yeah so somebody with a very very big stomach that is somebody who's uh, or I mean uh, we thought that is somebody who's uh, obese mm -hmm. um, not I mean without us realizing that it goes over and above just having a pot belly mm -hmm. and that that is not really obese I mean we're just starting to get um, um, the right uh, perceptions around it mm -hmm. but me uh, growing up the, the issues of also people who are extremely very fat and also these things being associated with people who are rich mm. that um, people who are of the lower socioeconomic status are not uh, associated with uh, this this condition mm. so those are also some, some of the things that growing up and even right now those are things that uh, people tend to think and again it's also uh, young people also thinking that obesity is for I mean, those who, I mean, the old people mm. are not really for also for young people because young people uh, feel that, uh, yeah, these are old, or, I mean, the boomers' mm -hmm. uh, condition and not, um, not theirs. But there are a lot of other things that also, uh, I think, uh, I mean, just extending the conversation that contribute to this thing. Uh, I mean, a lot of people perceive uh, obesity to be as a result of just uh, you mean the type of food that you eat. Mm. Uh, that is a perception, but uh, I think it goes over and above the nutrition. Yeah, sure thing. So I was born with obesity, which mm. is, uh, when I talk about that, is usually a very interesting conversation. Because mm. growing up, people thought that obesity really is a, is a disease of old people. Mm. and someone could not be born with it. So I was born and I lived with childhood obesity mm -hmm. for, uh, for the most part of my childhood. And some of the biggest community perceptions that we saw, mm. uh, first of all, people think you are healthy. 
Yeah, if you're being. You know, come and uh, uh, do your cheeks <laughs> like cheeks. this, and ah, that's a healthy baby. Hmm? Without realizing that, you know, this person is, uh, mm-hmm. has developed uh, overweight and obesity mm-hmm. and is in fact becoming at a risk of other diseases. Mm-hmm. Then the other thing that is there when you're talking about uh, obesity in terms of perceptions in the community is a lot of the uh, young to middle-aged adults who just started to work want to develop uh, a belly uh, intentionally oh, yeah. so that they are seen as rich mm. obesity is often associated with wealth mm. so uh, someone who you know wears a coat and a suit and has a, a small uh, a big belly and mm. can be able to you know put his hands on them mm. who was always seen as someone who is rich in oh, their society he has made it he has made it in life that was also another perception that we saw when it comes to obesity and then there's another one that uh, is even there to date that People blame uh, uh, individuals living with obesity mm. that it's their fault mm, that they are living with blaming. obesity. They are blaming the victim. Mm. Not knowing that this disease is caused sometimes by slow metabolism or mm. changes in how fat is being metabolized in the body. Mm. Uh, there is also issues of uh, uh, uncontrolled cravings for different types of food. That's a disease that needs to be treated and has been very well documented. There is issues of the environment. Mm-hmm. I can only afford to eat what's available. what's available. So if there is no other interventions, mm-hmm. by the virtue that I live in this environment, I might already develop uh, obesity just because of the environment that I exist in mm. and so there's been a lot of that and that was also a big issue that I even faced myself where people thought that people living with obesity they are lazy mm. they are not productive and often they are not even smart uh, and yet uh, later on I went on to play things like rugby and handball which are very physically engaging uh, activities mm. um, really to part of dispel the myth and so we see a lot of these um, common perceptions and myths on obesity and especially in touch with young people which brings me to the next question Mm -hmm. which is um, how do we dispel some of these myths how do we bring people back to the right conversations on obesity and young people but also just on obesity as a topic Mm. Yeah, sure. I think um, for us to, um, I mean, bring bring people to the right conversation around obesity, one of the things you have mentioned too is to recognize that, um, I mean, this is a condition that sometimes are without your control. Mm. And uh, I liked, uh, I mean, you just, uh, I mean, mentioning that um, there are a lot of things that are happening in your environment and then you don't have control over them. Mm-hmm. For example, the policies that are made around nutrition, and all that, if that is what is available, I, I mean, you can't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Which, uh, mm-hmm. let, let me pose you that, because it brings us to another interesting work that we're working in at the moment. Mm-hmm. So, for example, policies on mm-hmm. transfers. On transfers, yeah. If they're not regulated, population level, people will develop obesity. Mm-hmm. If the built environment does not support walking mm-hmm. and running and it's risky, mm-hmm. then you're not engaged in physical activity, then you might develop or, you know some other types of waste. Mm-hmm. Okay. Continue. Yeah. So I was saying that uh, really the environment uh, we need to, you know, I mean, make people really come to the, the fundamental understanding that obesity is not really something that uh, comes as I mean you you bring it to yourself. It's not something that comes deliberately. Mm. It's something that sometimes happens uh, unintentionally, or, or I mean most of the time happen in unintentionally. And you look at, uh, because it's more linked to, again, also the food that you're eating, but it can also be around genetics. Mm. So if there are things that are without my control, I think the victim blaming, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, people blaming the victim uh, for, for their condition is something that we should dispel and also come up with programs that uh, I think can um, uh, de-stigmatize uh, mm-hmm. obesity. And also... I think it's something that you, I think you'll expound on is just using languages that are sensitive. Uh, 
mm. and avoiding uh, body shaming languages and uh, recognizing people as people first before mentioning their condition. Mm -hmm. I think that is what you mentioned, the people first mm -hmm. language. Just first refer to me as a person before you talk about my condition. Mm -hmm. Instead of say, an obese person, talk about people living with obesity. Mm. And I think that is recognizing that. So it's, I, I think, shifting the conversation from uh, being too much, uh, I mean, obsessed with the disease to, uh, I mean, uh, encouraging a conversation around how do we, uh, uh, I mean, integrate these people in the society so that they, they don't feel like they're not part of the society. Mm -hmm. So those programs and also, I mean, that's promotion interventions that uh, really encourage people to address these, um, uh, I mean, the things that uh, uh, may make them to, to develop obesity and all that. So I think programmatic-wise, and in terms of even the, the interventions which are digital we can mm -hmm. come up with to promote that healthy living and provide information that people need to mm -hmm. be able to make healthy choices but again i want to mention mm -hmm. something that uh, i think also individuals can also participate in we can't cry that um, i mean if we if this is the data the environment then we can't change it i think in our little big way there's something that we can do uh, i mean us coming together to be able to petition with the government to be able to enact policies and this is something that mm -hmm. you and i have been engaging uh, on the policy interventions and the police petition petitioning governments across east africa to enact transfer policies mm -hmm. and these are i mean uh, both and we have said the basic is both a risk factor and also a consequence so i think if we can also come together sensitize the people and make them understand that yes there are things that are also very difficult to achieve but we can achieve them nonetheless mm -hmm. so policy petition because we have the numbers you can go out and petition the government to really enact this policy and mm -hmm. it has been proven to work in very many uh, countries across the globe yeah sure thing and uh, i think what I'd, I'd really now add on top of that is uh, again you've really explained people mm -hmm. first language mm -hmm. very beautifully is is a very respectful way of addressing people and recognizing people before the condition mm. so that the person is not necessarily their condition if mm. you say you are an obese person mm. uh, you are the condition mm. you know you don't go to someone living with cancer and say you're a cancerous person mm. 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 yeah you're just someone living with cancer mm. so is that respect to really approach the people first and and i think this helps with the uh, the conversation on stigma mm -hmm. because a lot of the stigma is also deeply ingrained in the language that we speak so if we start recognizing people as, as people and treating them with respect then we start to reduce the stigma that comes with you know living with obesity and as a result start to encourage more positive behavior mm -hmm. to help individuals you know control and manage you know their weight and uh, especially the fact mm -hmm. that uh, that happens to them because part of also developing obesity is even associated with mental health people have a mental health condition that uh, forces them to, to eat to overeat mm -hmm. uh, and and for mm -hmm. some others Sleep. yeah to under eat so it's also a mental health issue and that is why you can't really go blaming the victims without really understanding the full spectrum mm. of what they are living with and what they are you know struggling with mm. so i think there's needs to as part of intervention a lot of emphasis on education and public awareness there needs to be a lot of emphasis on uh, people first language and treating people with respect mm -hmm. there needs to be a lot of emphasis on policy and policy work to ensure that we have interventions that uh, improve health at population levels mm -hmm. then there also needs to be support of um, interventions for individuals to help them improve on their weight things like making drugs accessible mm -hmm. you know people living with obesity need to go to the hospital and get the you know weight management drugs and we've seen those uh, being inaccessible and not available uh, especially here in sub-Saharan Africa because it's still not considered as a disease or a condition mm. that needs to be treated with seriousness. Mm. A lot of this medication to treat and control and manage are not available. A lot of these interventions like surgeries mm. and gastric bypass and whatnot are not available easily to the common population to help them 
manage their disease. There is not a lot of communities, mm -hmm. you know, to support each other Nutrition. for people living with obesity. So those are some of the interventions that um, I feel need to be put in place to really amplify, you know, the work on obesity. So the mm -hmm. last question that... But even, even before you go to yeah. the last question, uh, I mean, one of the things that I want to you to expand on really the connection between obesity and youth. Mm -hmm. I mean, we might have talked about this, but uh, we want to draw the, the, I mean, a clear uh, link between obesity and, and the young people. While people have, have mm. thought that this is a condition of the old, is there an indication that obesity is presenting even in young people? Yeah, so that's what I was actually coming to in terms of summary, mm -hmm. bringing it up all together mm -hmm. once again. So, yes, uh, and I have a very good example of how obesity really connects with young people. Mm -hmm. So, there's a few connections that I'll mention and then we can move into closing remarks on the same. Mm -hmm. So, one, obesity as a disease affects not only the older people, mm -hmm. but also the young people because it's caused by a varying degree of factors mm -hmm. ranging from both uh, individual like genetics and mm -hmm. family family links uh, behavioral like uh, overeating uh, physical inactivity uh, which could lead to also these diseases mm -hmm. environmental like the effect the environment has on your food options on your physical activity uh, and also a step further is even uh, uh, biological in the terms of uh, the hormone and hormone imbalances mm. in the body and also the processing of uh, of different fat metabolism systems in the mm. body. So all of these processes make it so that young people can and have lived with obesity. There is a phenomenon or this is a category of obesity called childhood obesity. Mm. So these are children literally who have grown living with obesity and also there is adults it's just the same with diabetes where we have type 1 diabetes which is primarily occurs in children mm -hmm. and then type 2 in adults because of different mm -hmm. risk factors so that is one in terms of just understanding the broad spectrum of uh, risk factors leading to obesity and mm -hmm. how youths are part of those people who are directly affected or directly at risk of developing obesity due to these risk factors and how it develops. The second thing is obesity and youth in terms of perceptions. Mm -hmm. As you grow as someone living with obesity or as you see other people living with obesity, how has the environment shaped you as a young people? How has the environment shaped your perception on obesity? Some people have been shaped by the fact that they need to develop you know a belly later on in life to be considered as wealthy mm. and so they start engaging in unhealthy diets and unhealthy living behavior to to develop that and some people have been de developed or uh, to see people living with obesity as lazy and unproductive and so there is also that angle in which as you grow and young people as they grow they've been influenced by mm. different perceptions on obesity and then to move it a step further, there is the point of lack of education and uh, proper interventions mm -hmm. when it comes to obesity as a disease on the young people. A lot of the young people are not educated, mm -hmm. they are not bothered in fact, and even the government and education systems have failed to put this education or public health awareness mm -hmm. to these young people. Therefore, there is a link as well in terms of the mismatch between mm. the interventions that are supposed to get the young people on the bandwagon mm. on obesity versus what is being practiced on the ground. Mm. So, and the last part, which is the more optimistic part of this link, is the realization and the movement that young people have created to really begin talking about um, healthy bodies, uh, to really respect individuals uh, mm. as people first before the disease, to really create networks and communities and even viral uh, online attention on the subject. And more than that, to leverage on technology and different interventions to create ways forward to fill in these gaps that I was talking about mm. before that face the young people. Essentially, young people are becoming the drivers of 
the next generation of policy, the next generation of intervention, and the next generation of perception on obesity. And I think mm -hmm. we young people are continuously playing a very important role to ensure that we move out of this negative, uh, one-sided, and scientifically unfounded uh, mm -hmm. things on obesity and move more towards the facts, to move more towards uh, interventions that actually help individuals and to move forward towards mm -hmm. really improving the health outcomes mm -hmm. of uh, individuals, both the young and the, and old. the old. Yeah, yeah I think for long and for short, what you're saying is that um, young people are most at risk of obesity owing to the... Um, I mean, their behaviors and things they're engaging, mm -hmm. looking at even their um, eating habits. You know, it's uh, at um, youth who state that, uh, I mean, young people also just pick, I mean, that it was very, I would call them weird dietary habits, mm -hmm. or engaging in uh, foods that are not really, mm, uh, I mean, giving them the right nutrients they need, but they think that is what they need to be eating. And I mean, you, you, you look at uh, what, uh, uh, most uh, I would say most ladies would want to engage in like eating this junk food or people don't want to cook and mm. uh, instead order food or order burger or order water I think it, this is something that um, is as associated with a risk part of putting mm -hmm. the most young people at risk because of the last lifestyles that they pick that mm. now I don't want to prepare my food and I really most I mean most of my friends where I talk to you'll hear somebody oh, I just ordered food and I don't want to cook and I don't want to do what because it, they feel it's very difficult to mm. wash those or do the utensils and all that. So I think that puts them at risk. And also behaviors we picked around, we pick around maybe use of alcohol. And it's really at this stage when people now start picking those behaviors, mm -hmm. putting them at risk because there's connection between alcohol and, and obesity. There's a connection mm -hmm. between also even tobacco and, and, and obesity. I mean, the link while, while might be far-fetched but it, it, it is there, and also really the lack of, of physical exercise. While I must um, commend uh, a lot of young people right now are embracing physical exercise, not really for the reason of beating obesity, but uh, for other, I would call them, I mean, um, uh, peripher periphery reasons, which are not really connected to, mm. to, 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 to obesity. So, I mean, uh, in, in a nutshell, what you're saying, Young people are mostly uh, the most at risk group because of the behaviors that they pick during this transition state from from being uh, from what uh, mm. uh, the youth would say to adulthood. Yeah, but at the same time, they also present the most potential in terms mm. of people who can really change the narrative when it comes mm. to obesity. Because if the young people can develop the right, can have the right information, mm. can have the right behaviors, long term we have lesser cases of obesity but also even in the meantime we have a lot more treatment of people with respect mm. and also really adopting a healthier habits over the long term I, so, really, I really think that you you finish on a very positive mm. note that really yes while there are a lot of issues to do with young people but i mean there's a uh, i mean hope that yes mm -hmm. we can change the narrative and young people can embrace um, healthy living um, uh, lifestyles or healthy lifestyles that can really help them address these obesity and all that. Yeah, and more than that, even the young people who are already living with obesity mm. and those who already uh, you know, have developed obesity over their lifetime, they also present unique opportunities to come out and share their stories, mm. to really bring more awareness mm. to the conversation at the same time rally for more intervention on this subject so it's a true uh, it's a very positive outlook at the moment and there needs to be a lot more work to really mm -hmm. ensure that we bring the facts to the fore and we also encourage a movement forward mm -hmm. and with that we'll see you on the next one now that was incredible thank you for listening in Share this with your networks and follow us on all social media at Storylink and at NCD Champions. See you on the next one.